Hey, what's going on guys? I am genuinely excited about upcoming and current audio solutions for content creators. Like we have so many more options today than we had three years ago back when your only option was like a Shure SM7B and like a big old mixer. Now we have a bunch of good USB microphones to choose from. And not only do we have a good chunk of affordable multi-track XLR audio interfaces, but also a plethora of sub hundred dollar microphones. One of them being this brand new $100 dynamic mic, so graciously bestowed upon us by Audio-Technica, the AT2040. You probably know the company because they're the same guys that make the famous AT2020. Just now they made a dynamic version. Bottom line is there is very little reason to pay more than $100 for a microphone nowadays, at least for broadcasting. That is not for, not for a recording studio, that'd be ridiculous. But in front of me, I have four microphones, all of them less than $100, all right, they're $99, they're $100. Two of them are condenser mics, two of them are dynamic mics. Four of them are fantastic. At least I think so, I haven't tried this one yet. But three of them are definitely fantastic. We'll figure out if this one's any good in a minute. We're gonna take a look at all four of these side by side so you can see and hear the differences between them. And then, probably most importantly, we're gonna compare them to their high-end counterparts. So for example, the dynamic mics, we will compare to the industry standard Shure SM7B that for some reason every streamer wants. It's a good microphone, don't get me wrong. It's just very overkill for streamers who aren't making any money yet. And for the dynamic mics, we have my wife's beautiful thousand dollar blue bottle rocket here, which is just, like, do you see this here? Like, how do you, like, it's just, it's just so beautiful. Sorry about that. The point is, I wanna see how much of a difference there is between the big boy microphones and the little 99ers on the side over here and how much of a difference there is if we add a little bit of EQ. And then we'll do the fun thing where we play the sound of the cheap microphone next to the sound of the expensive microphone and we see how many of you can really tell the difference. Let's go. By the way, update for you, if you haven't heard the news, Streambeats and 100 Thieves have collaborated to make something awesome called Hype Tracks. High energy hype music for your gameplay videos, your montages, DMCA free for your live streams. Here, like I'll give you a couple seconds to listen. You liked that, didn't you? Of course, just like all the other Streambeats genres, it's available on Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming places, but this one is extra special because we also have 24 hour streams going on YouTube and Twitch running the music constantly. Links down below, feel free to go check them out. All right, let's set up a mic stand and let's just start diving right into these and listening. All right, what do you say we start with the condenser mics first, just for fun. So what we're listening to right now is the AT2020. I'm about mm, four inches away from the microphone and it's connected to the computer through the Elgato Wave XLR. This is like the classic streaming microphone. Everyone always asks me about it. It's the smallest one on the table here, but it's this small little brush black metal microphone and it sounds great. Let's take a listen to the Ember. So now what we're listening to is the Blue Ember, which honestly, I've been a fan of for a while, mostly because again, all these microphones are great, but I really like the style of this one. I think when you're on camera, the way your microphone looks is really important. And this has this really iconic brush metal cobalt blue body with this glossy black top built-in pop filter up here. I just think it's got such a unique design. I'm a fan but let's jump over to the $1,000 bottle rocket and see how that one sounds. And so here I'm just gonna record a couple sentences on this microphone so you can hear what my voice sounds like here versus the $200 microphones, the two $100 microphones. You got what I was saying, right? All right, I'm gonna take a listen here real quick. We're gonna see what the differences between these microphones are. Give me like, give me like five seconds. All right, so if you have any thoughts on these microphones before I share mine, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. Also, by the way, if you feel like this video is gonna be helpful at all or has been helpful, feel free to hit the like button. Helps out a ton. Thank you. The AT2020 and the Bottle Rocket actually sounded very similar. The Bottle Rocket definitely had a little bit clearer highs and it wasn't quite as muddy. It was overall like the crispest out of all of them, but it was very close to the AT2020. The Blue Ember had a little bit more uh, warmth to it, a little bit more thickness in the mid-tones, which I'm actually not a fan of. It feels a little bit muddy for a voice. So if I were to EQ this to make either of these $100 mics sound like a $1,000 mic, I'd boost up the highs a tiny bit. And then on the Ember, I would give it 
maybe about a 500 hertz to 1000 hertz scoop. Just cut out some of those midtones. I'm gonna do that for you in a little bit after we check out the dynamic mics. Let's jump over to those. All right, check it. Now we got the Rode Pod mic. And with a dynamic mic, generally you wanna get a lot closer to the microphone in order to get its full dynamic sound. I've been a fan of this one ever since it was released. It was the first real $100 dynamic mic that was a contender for podcasting or broadcasting of any kind. Outside the classic like SM58 stage microphone that we all know. But let's jump over to the new AT2040 and see how that sounds. So now we've got the AT2040, which I'm already noticing just by listening to it here. It also feels a little bit more mid heavy. I wanna take a listen to it when I don't hear my own voice through my own skull. We'll wanna hear it afterwards. But in general, we got a very similar look to the AT2020, just kind of on the small side, that brush black on brush black. MKBHD would love it. Let's throw on the SM7B and then let's listen to all three. Yeah, this is the classic. This is the SM7B, brand new, right out of the box. How's it sound? How do you like it compared to the other ones? Before I take a listen and share my critique and my thoughts, what are your thoughts on the sound between this, the pod mic and the AT2040? Put them in the comments down below. I'm gonna take a listen real quick. I did this without using the built-in EQ that most people use, that presence boost is a common one. And since it's built into the microphone, it's, it's worth using it for the test. Give me one second. How do we sound now? Now that we've added a presence boost, what do we think of this microphone? The pod mic is definitely a very bright dynamic microphone. I'm gonna be honest, the AT2040 was probably my least favorite between the three. Very muddy, very lacking in the low end and the high end. The SM7B definitely had a very flat frequency response, which would make it great for any kind of recording since it's almost like how we filmed these in the last video, you know, where we take off the LUT. You can see how we film, it allows us more flexibility. I'd imagine that's what the SM7B would do for recording as well. But I think just for going straight in, the sound of the pod mic is probably my favorite. Let me know in the comments down below if it was yours as well or if you hated it. But it's a very bright sound. I still think I can EQ them to sound similar. I'm gonna jump into Logic for a second and throw some EQ on all these. And then I'm gonna play two condenser mics and two dynamic mics. One of them will be the expensive ones. The other one will be a cheap mic. You let me know if you can tell the difference. All right, EQ is done. It's, it's close enough. I'm not a, a professional music producer by any means, but I can get by. I think you'll have a harder time with a condenser mic. So let's start with those. Here's an example of my voice on a condenser microphone. Here's an example of my voice on a condenser microphone. Here's an example of my voice on a condenser microphone. Here's an example of my voice on a condenser microphone. Which one do you think is which? I'll give you like five seconds. Go ahead and start writing a comment down below if you want to guess this and the dynamic mic. Write down which one you think is the $1,000 mic and which $100 mic you think is the other one and which one you think is which. Got it? All right, let's move to dynamic. For this one, just for fun, we're going to do all three because this was actually a little bit harder to match. Here is an example of my voice on a dynamic microphone. Here's an example of my voice on a dynamic microphone. Here's an example of my voice on a dynamic microphone. Here is an example of my voice on a dynamic microphone. Here's an example of my voice on a dynamic microphone. Here's an example of my voice on a dynamic microphone. Okay, I'll give you five more seconds. Finish your comments. Go ahead and enter them down below. Which microphone do you think each of those three were? Let's start with the condensers. Microphone number one was the $100 AT2020. I decided to do that one on this one because it was already very similar to the Bottle Rocket. I was really impressed with the sound of the AT2020. I only had to do a couple minor tweaks that I felt brought them more and aligned with each other. I gave it about a two decibel boost at 120 Hertz to give it a little bit more thickness, a little bit more presence, and then another two decibel boost at about 6,000 Hertz because I felt it needed a little bit more clarity, a little bit more, it needed to, to break through a little bit more. So how many of you got the first one right? Let's jump to dynamic mics. Dynamic microphone number one was the Shure SM7B, which honestly in this group, has not been my favorite microphone. Dynamic mic number two was the AT2040, which was by far my least favorite microphone out of the three. It is a, a, a surprisingly dead microphone. There's almost no low end and almost no high end, and you can't really boost it up that much without making it sound kind of fake. You can kind of hear that the high end and the EQ has just been shot as high as I can just to kind of get it to catch up. Just wasn't really crazy about this microphone. It's almost nothing but mid-tones. Versus the pod mic, which was microphone number three. 
that has always really impressed me. This thing's got so much clarity. It needs a little bit of a bass boost, but not so much that it ruins the entire microphone. So if you got the dynamic microphones right, congratulations, that was a tough one. But let me know, which one of these microphones is your favorites? Do you prefer condenser or dynamic microphones and why? And if you were to buy another microphone in the future, or if you're planning on buying another microphone in the future, is it one of these four, or I guess five or six microphones? And if so, which one? Let me know. I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below. I hope this helped, guys. And as always, I ready. seriously, that's great. I'm happy dinner's ready. That's so sweet. Totally ruined the take. Let's keep it anyway. Thanks, guys. Happy streaming.